Hey guys, what's going on? Paul here. Welcome back to another Cardano video. This one's going to be all about the Indigo protocol, which is now live on the Cardano mainnet. Congratulations to Eric and the rest of the team. Eric's been on the channel before and I'll hopefully have him on again fairly soon. I also met James at the Cardano Summit. We did record a quick video and I will post that one later today as well. But in this one, I'm going to concentrate on talking about how this protocol works. I'll show you some examples as well of me taking out positions and making changes to the positions. And I've also put together a quick slide to talk about some of the reasons why someone might use a protocol like this. But I'll also be talking about the risks of this as well, because there are some good opportunities here, but that also brings extra risk. And it's always good to know it all yourself so you can do your own proper due diligence. Questions, leave them down below, give the video a like, share it out if you think others can benefit. I really do appreciate it and let's jump into it. Okay, so this is the platform here. I will put timestamps down below, but there'll be three main sections, me giving a quick overview here and talking about how it works, then showing you how it works and then talking about some of the reasons people might actually use it. So this is the main dashboard when you come in. So you can see currently there are two assets that you could take out. They are IUSD and IBTC. So these are when you would buy IBTC on a DEX or if you actually opened a position here for IBTC, you're not actually going to own Bitcoin. You own a representation of that and it closely follows the price of the real world asset. The same with IUSD. You could also do this for a stock. And again, I think the DAO is going to be the one that, that decides what assets get added here. But I think technically they could add any real world asset once the price can be tracked. And that's what you get. You get exposure to the asset without actually owning it. So how this actually works here is that if you wanted to take out IUSD, so you have two options. You could go over to a DEX and you could come over here, someone like MinSwap here, and you could come in here and you could buy IUSD. I will say anyone buying IUSD right now on any of the DEXs, just be very careful of trying to buy a bigger volume of it. So you can see I have a position opened where I opened a CDP and I have 41 US or IUSD here. And I could sell that fine and I would get the value for that in ADA. But if I wanted to go for 10,000 IUSD, I don't have 10,000 IUSD, but say I did and I wanted to use that to buy um, ADA, Potentially, I'm going to be hitting some big slippage. You can see here, actually, the price impact here would be 52%. So there isn't a huge amount of IUSD in circulation yet. So just be cautious on that. I would say as the next few days and weeks go by, we will see more and more coming into the DEXs as well. I did check Sunday Swap and Wing Riders, but again, not much volume over there for IUSD yet. But the other option to take out IUSD, and this is where some of the examples at the end will show you why you might do it here as opposed to just buying on a DEX, is you can come in here and you could open your position. You can see I have one open here for the 41 IUSD and my collateral ratio is 151%. So that means the collateral that I put up against this to take out this, it's not a loan, but it's similar to how that works is I put up the collateral and I can take out the other asset then. So the aid that I put up as collateral, I put it up yesterday and I set the collateral at 150%. See, the price of ADA has gone up slightly since yesterday. So that means that my ADA is now worth more against the IUSD that I took out, which is great. Now on the collateral ratio, you could go as low as 110% as your collateral. So I could have put up less ADA, but for me, that would be just too risky to go that low. Personally, I would like to keep it at least 140 to 150. If I was getting down towards 120%, I would be fairly uneasy about that if I had any decent amount of money in there. So that's the dashboard. This will show you all of the assets. It shows you the current trading price, the current market cap. So this is how much of the I assets is in circulation. So you can see, I was saying there wasn't much in circulation on the DEXs yet, but you can see that there has been a decent amount of IUSD actually created. It just hasn't been provided to DEXs just yet. You will see that if you go into the liquidations, actually we'll start with stability pools because that will show you where some of this has gone. So you can see nearly $1 million worth of IUSD has gone into the stability pools. So this is what helps the process fully function. Liquidations are handled here, fees 
of them liquidations and other platform fees are paid to people who provide liquidity here so you can see the IBTC and IUST. When I bring Eric on, I might get him to talk a bit more about this, or I might do a separate video talking about that, but I want to kind of cover the basics here in this one. Liquidations then shows all of the different positions that are currently on the platform. And you can see here that these two positions here are getting fairly close to liquidation. So this one's at 114%. So that means the ADA they have put up against that is only worth 114% compared to the actual debt so if this went down low enough i'm not sure exactly what the liquidation point is but if it went down low enough the 2650 iusd the person who took out this debt they get to keep that iusd but the collateral they put up against it will be wiped out and that will be used to cover the debt so if you look down through here you can see people with all different amounts this one here i would be slightly concerned if this was me with this position you can see one person has a collateral ratio of 119 percent here they've put up 180,000 ADA against this position and they've got out 2.8 IBTC for this so just a personal thing I wouldn't be that comfortable at these levels but maybe they're fine they're watching it closely but the current market you just never know what's going to happen in it there could be some other event that drops the price five ten percent which puts you right on the line of liquidation if that happened for this person it wouldn't be a total loss they wouldn't lose the 180,000 ADA well the value of that they would lose the 180,000 ADA but they have the 2.81 IBTC in place of that so they would lose maybe 10 to 20 percent of the value they've put up so that's a bit on the liquidations you then have the governance where you can come in and you can stake your indie tokens you can see i've tried it out here i put my 75 indie into this yesterday so far it's earned 0.57 indie tokens from staking which isn't bad at all so now on to actually creating a position if you wanted to take out a cdp so you can see right now if i go my positions you can see i have one position here and if i go into manage this position here just to show you you can see that I put up 200 ADA for this and it gave me 41.36 IUSD. My collateral ratio right now is 151%. So that's an example of one that's open. And what I could do is I could actually take out some of my collateral if I come in here and I put in the amount of ADA I want to take out. So say I wanted to take out 30 ADA, that would drop my collateral ratio to 128. If I took out 50, brings me right down to a very dangerous level. But right now I could do it, bringing it anywhere down to 110% is the lowest. Mint, I could come in and I could create more. So for my 151%, I could actually try and create, let's see, could I create another 10 IUSD? You can see I would be able to get another 10 IUSD. But again, that would take my collateral down. If I wanted to close this position out, I go into burn in here, I would send in the 41.36 this total amount of iusd here put that in close the cdp and i would get back my 200 ada then so as i already have my ada or my iusd position here i can't take out another one i can modify that one as you can see there but i'll take out a new position on ibtc just to show you how the process works so if i go into open position here the collateral amount for me, I would go down to, it depends what you want, how much if you have a set amount of ADA you want to put up, or if there is a set amount of IBTC, or in your case, IUSD, if that's what you're taking out. It depends what one you want to do. So you can fill in any of these and they work out the rest of them here. So let's say I put up 100 ADA here, and the collateral ratio, if I set that at 135%, you can see this is the amount of IBTC I would get. I could go all the way down to 110 and I would get even more IBTC. But as I said, 140, 150 is definitely the era, area I would be at my lowest. And if I was putting in bigger sums of money, I would definitely be looking up towards the green area. You can see here 185%, but definitely 160% and above for me personally. I leave this one at 160. I clicked it. I understand the transaction uh, involves significant financial risk. Again, everyone do your own due diligence on all of this. Click on open position. So what happens here now, this can take a little bit of time. You can see it's building the transaction. 
then it's checking the balance and it will give me a pop-up then from for me i'm connected with eternal it'll give me the pop-up to sign the transaction then now in this as well i did get an error when i done this with an other wallet what happened was i was using a wallet that i have a lot of different assets in it and when i signed it and it came up it came up then that there was i see the pop-up coming up here it came up that I had too many assets in the wallet and it couldn't be used, that I needed to use a wallet with less assets in it. So I opened a new wallet to go about this one here. So you might get that error. And what you do is you just have to use a wallet that has less UTXOs in it. So do I remember the password? Okay, I had to pause there for a second. Couldn't remember the password for that wallet. But it's all confirmed now and you can see confirming the transaction it will come up complete here in a minute what happens is the funds go out and then i get the ibtc into my wallet so that's how simple it is to use that now i could go off to a dex i could sell that ibtc for something else i could go into the stability pools i can provide it in the stability pools and i earn some of the fees that are in there as well so you can see transaction has been completed successfully there now if I go back to the dashboard, then you'll see that I have the two positions here. You can see balance isn't showing for IBTC because it just hasn't arrived in my wallet yet, but that should come in in a minute there as well. I hope this has helped as a brief overview. I'll show you now some of the reasons of why someone might actually take out positions like this. Any questions, let me know below and I will do a follow-up video to try and talk through some of them as well. So we've talked about how to use the platform, how it all works. Now, why would you use a platform like this? So it can bring some good opportunities. Look, it also brings risks because anytime you get involved with leveraging positions or sending funds out of your wallet, it always brings some extra risks to it. But here's some of the reasons that I could think off the top of my head of why someone might use it. So you think the price of Bitcoin is going to go down. What you do is you open an IBTC position. So you put up your ADA against the position like I showed there to open my own IBTC position. You go and you then sell the IBTC on the market. So let's say Bitcoin, let's say you've done this for one IBTC. You've opened the position, you put up whatever collateral is needed. You go off and you sell that one Bitcoin on the market. Say you get $17,000. We're a bit below that today, but let's use even numbers. The price goes down which is what you thought was going to happen. So let's say the price goes down to $15,000. You then go and you buy back your IBTC. So at $15,000, you have $17,000 from selling the one IBTC. So you spend your 15,000 on that and you're left with $2,000 in a stable coin, which is great. You close the IBTC position, you get back your initial collateral that you had put up and you also have your $2,000 profit. Brilliant. The other side of that coin is if the price of Bitcoin starts to go up instead of going down like you thought, where is your cutoff point? So I would say make sure that you have hard lines drawn of where you're willing to actually cut the position off and accept the loss. So if Bitcoin goes to 20,000, you've only got $17,000 worth of a stable coin to buy back in. So you need to add extra funds to that to buy back the one BTC as well. Okay, so another example then would be you think the price of ADA is going to go up. So you open an IUSD position. So you put up your ADA to open this position. Now with these as well, the advantage over using leverage trading or something like that is when you open these positions, you don't have fees for holding the position open for a certain length of time versus other things like I do leverage trading, but I don't put it out on the channel because it's a hugely risky thing to do and I just do it myself. But in that, every time you open a position, you're paying fees for how long you open the position. If it's open for a certain number of hours, then you will incur fees just for holding that position on top of the profit or loss you make on the trade. With these, that doesn't happen. So you open your IUSD position, sell your IUSD for ADA. The price of ADA goes up, which is great. That's what you thought was going to happen. You then sell your ADA back to IUSD. You then have more IUSD than when you started use however much you took out to close the position and keep the profit great you've made profit the same thing as the btc position what happens if the price goes down for people who like to put numbers on this i've put this one together here as well so i open a cdp position i put up whatever ada collateral i need to put up i take out my iusd so i want one thousand dollars so i've taken that out at a 31 cent ada I then go to the market and I sell this. I get 3,226 ADA for this. And then I wait. So if the price of ADA goes up, 
Brilliant. The price of ADA safe goes up to 40 cent. I then decide to sell these 3,200 ADA. I would get $1,290 back. I've made a nice profit here. Depending on how long I left that open, I also had this ADA staking, so I'm earning some staking rewards as well. And one of the really nice things about the Indigo setup as well is that the ADA I put up as collateral, I'm still earning the staking rewards on that as well, which is something I haven't seen across any of the other platforms yet. And it is a really nice feature to have and one of the benefits of Cardano staking as well. So let's say the price doesn't go up to 40 cent. It starts to go down. This is where your risk management needs to come in. So it goes down to 25 cent. The 3,200 ADA is only worth 806 IUSD then. Another thing you have to take into account here as well is your collateral. So if the price of ADA is going down, potentially you need to look at your collateral. You might need to add a bit more or close out the position and take the loss. So again, these are the decisions you need to make. There's other strategies you can look at. I'm not going to get into them now, but you could look at taking the ADA that you have bought on the market by selling your IUSD, putting that into your CDP as collateral to really push up your collateral ratio so the trade can then stay open longer. Obviously, the risk of this then is that if the price of ADA really tanks down and the position gets closed, then you're left with nothing. You've lost everything instead of being left with whatever the IUSD would have been worth. Okay, so there's probably lots more I could get into here. Hopefully these examples have helped explaining how the platform works, showing some of the examples of how to open positions, and then talking a bit here about some of the reasons why you would, as well as talking about the risks of if it doesn't go right and the rewards if it does. So hope it has helped. Please do share it out. I do appreciate it. Leave questions down below and I might do a follow-up video to talk about some of the individual questions and try and sum up if there's any common themes there as well. Thanks for watching guys. Subscribe if you're new and I will talk to you soon.